Trap cards are by a landslide the most criticized cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! and rightfully so. And although some of my favorite cards in the game are actually trap cards, I have quite a lot of negative things to say about them and what they become. Very often I'll hear people say things like trap cards are slow and slow cards are bad in fast-paced formats, therefore trap cards are poorly designed. I both simultaneously agree and disagree with the statement. It is true that trap cards are inherently slow because you have to wait one full turn before being able to use them, and that makes them less coveted. Most decks are practically playing no trap cards in their deck except for infinite impermanence but that doesn't count unless we're talking about like actually dedicated trap decks. There is practically no middle ground where you'll find someone play like 10 trap cards for example. You don't want to randomly draw like 2-3 to three trap cards in your combo deck or only one trap card in your trap deck. With that being said, trap cards are infamous for how much psychological pressure they can apply on their opponents. Because of their mysterious nature, you can never really tell whether a trap card can hurt you or not, and sometimes they can range anywhere between engine starters such as, I don't know, Exorcist Ravadis or Welcome Labyrinth, all the way to actual floodgates such as Skill Drain and Goes and Match. Trap decks typically play a very small amount of monsters, but max out on their consistency traps, their floodgates, and also their interruptions. This allows them to spend less time thinking when they're going first or second and straight up just go set 5 pass. This puts their opponent in extremely dubious positions because now they have to start worrying about a lot of things. Things. They have to make sure that their opponent doesn't get their engine started but also doesn't blow them out. And trap decks have a tendency to have a lot of stamina and exponentially grow their resources the longer a game goes. Therefore, if the player going second against the trap deck is not capable of doing anything, he's at a huge disadvantage. And because of how hard that really is to achieve, trap decks have a tendency to have a really good game one when they go first at least. And people also have a tendency to play cards that are not really effective against trap decks such as hand traps and sometimes board breakers like Lava Golem Sphere Mode, Dark Ruler, etc. Now the issue is, the psychological game completely disappears post game 1 when back removal are added to the equation. Why should I have to respect your game plan when I just have Harpy's Feather Duster to take care of everything in one shot? This turns trap cards into a high risk high reward concept that is equally satisfying as it is infuriating. And depending on the trap cards that you draw, you might win your games with pretty much no interactions whatsoever. Just look at Skill Drain for example, its name already is a perfect representation for what it does for the game. The card drains the skill from pretty much every single monster and also from the game. It shuts down a really important mechanic and that's something that I never really liked too much about trap cards. When anyone thinks about trap cards, what is their first reflex? Simple, a trap card should be a trap, right? And by trap, I mean something that you fall into by being careless. Something that you could have played around if you were more careful. For example, back in retro formats, if I had 5 attack position monsters, I attacked you and you hit me with that mirror force, I couldn't really say that you were the sack, it was actually my fault for putting all the monsters into attack. Everyone played Mirror Force, I should have been aware of that and I should have played around that and respected it by putting only a few monsters in attack and the rest in defense. Whereas now unfortunately the concept of trapping your opponent is slowly but surely fading away. Trap cards have essentially became what spell cards always wanted to be but slower. Again, taking a look at Exorcist Travatis, for example, it doesn't really feel like a trap card whatsoever. This card clearly could have been a spell card, but then it would have been way too broken, so it only got printed as a trap card as a way to nerf it. And I really do believe that trap cards sometimes are just a sorry excuse for some spell cards having to get nerfed. And even when I look at other trap cards like Dimensional Barrier, they still don't feel like traps. It's really not like you can say, oh no, I got trapped under Dimensional Barrier, I should have played around it or something. There's really nothing you can do about it. And again, I understand why these trap cards exist and I'm not really super against them, I'm just kind of sad that they're always the best ones. I really do miss trap cards that actually punished your opponent for being careless. Waking the Dragon is the most modern example I can really think of. That card is the perfect definition of a psychological mind game that punishes your opponent for playing into it. And God knows how much I would love to see the Mirror Force trap cards come back into the game, but we all know that's never gonna happen. The last time we had the Mirror Force traps actually good in the format was in Zodiac format back in 2017. Back row removal was extremely scarce, like we didn't really have Duster or Lightning Storm or Evenly or anything like that, and we also didn't really have a really toolboxy extra deck. Now look at what we have. We have have Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, Axis Code Talker, and the list goes on. The options to get rid of trap cards are infinite, but unfortunately there are only a handful of trap cards that are really solid. And because of that, every single trap deck always ends up playing the exact same trap cards over and over. This kills variety, makes deck building way less enjoyable, and also makes the gameplay less exciting. 
My solution to this was to print a Divine Mirror Force with an effect that would be appropriate for today's metagame. A Mirror Force that would be strong enough to punish your opponent, but also couldn't really be taken care of just with sheer power, but with strategy instead. And this would revive the concept of reactiveness and cautiousness so that skillful players get rewarded. For example, this Mirror Force could, upon your opponent declaring an attack, banish every single monster your opponent controls face down, and if it would happen to be destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can target one card of the field and destroy it. That way you would actually have to respect back row instead of straight up blitzkrieging through it. I believe that there's still hope and this can still be achieved, but I really want to hear your thoughts about this subject in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.